Let's bring in Frank Figluzzi, former FBI Assistant Director for Counterintelligence, and former U.S. Attorney Harry Littman. Welcome both. So, Frank, you're here. I haven't seen you forever, it seems, because COVID and everything <laughs> else, you've been out west. But we've talked a lot on television and off. So tell us, what do you think is going on with this subpoena? Are they ever going to see these records? It seems like often when we talk, we're talking about delays and Trump and his legal team, and he's done it again. Um, and so the good news and bad news here, first, the bad news, yes, his delay will likely be successful. This lawsuit will likely outlive the length of the life of the committee. We understand that. But when it comes to the documents, and that's what I'm focused on far more than testimony in person by Donald Trump. Understand this, there are other ways to get your hands on communications. There are other people in those communications often, right? So you go another route. As the Supreme Court allowed today, you can go to the other party in that transaction, in that email, in that phone call, and ask what happened. So there are other ways of getting their hands on this data, but it's another example of, of Trump essentially thumbing his nose at the rule of law. Can you go to the phone companies, or is that only with a FISA judge and um, those kinds of electronics? No, that, absolutely. The committee and, of course, the DOJ can go and probably already have to the carriers individually, all the platforms, and say, we, we need what you have. And my bet is they've done that. And, Harry Littman, let's talk about the lawsuit, the Trump lawsuit, claiming that a former president has, quote, absolute immunity from being compelled to testify before Congress or a committee thereof regarding his actions as head of a co-equal branch of government. So you're the expert, but I seem to recall other presidents testifying. Um, Bill Clinton. Many. He was impeached many for lying other under president. Richard Nixon turned over the tapes. You're exactly right. Many other former presidents have testified. They did it, however, voluntarily. The only direct on point example is Harry Truman, who, in fact, did refuse. And based on that, the Department of Justice has said in the past, you can't compel a former president. And there's a, an opinion by Justice Kavanaugh suggesting the same. Trump doesn't need to win this. He needs two things to happen. He needs a court to be interested in it enough to take the time, as Frank says, to outlive the subpoena. And then he needs this apparent sliver of a majority that's emerging for the Republicans in the House to hold and then dissolve the subpoena when they take power. The actual argument is not um, silly, and there, the, a court could look at it and, and take it seriously. They also could move through it very quickly, but he is banking on an ultimate backstop in the Supreme Court saying, we'll look at the issue, and that will definitely run out the clock. And so, Frank, NBC News was first to report on the January 6th committee's final report. Um, what what are we sensing might be in that final report? We're all waiting for that. I, I was dismayed by the reporting, and I hope in this case that it's wrong, because what the reporting is telling us is that the committee report in its final version may not go there where it comes to FBI failures, general law enforcement failures leading up to and on January 6th. If that's right, it's troubling and it's disappointing because I think that would leave a huge gap in the work of the committee. We do know there was something called a blue committee that looked at law enforcement failures. They interviewed over 100 people in those agencies. We need to hear the results of those interviews. And, Harry, finally, there's a separate but related topic, which has come from The New York Times reporting Michael Schmidt, that Donald Trump wanted to weaponize the IRS against former FBI director James Comey, former deputy director McCabe. It seems to me, you know, that's Nixonian. That would be another impeachable offense, if true, and if followed up. Of course, it's too late for that. That's exactly uh, the word for it. And a law was passed after Nixon to make it a crime. And here are the facts. He, he exhorted John Kelly, his chief of staff, who has now been pretty uh, blunt about what a disaster of a president he was to do this. But Kelly said he prevented it when he was there. Trump said, oh, I don't know anything about it. Both Comey and McCabe were audited. And in each case there that year, the IRS decided to audit something like 5,000 of 150 plus million taxpayers. You do the math. The only thing that, that, we, that stands between this and the charge is Trump's denial of it. And of course, at, that, at this point, that's not worth very much. 
though something really does seem fishy and unlawful about it. 